Hey Peepsy Doodles! Long time no see, except not really. I think I just talked to you guys like, I don't know, a week ago. I talked to you a week ago. We talked about side. Okay, so today I'm gonna do another bookish type video. Um, I am going to do a book haul for October and November. These are books that either I have been gifted or I have picked up. Don't worry. I'm not going to go into a ton of detail on all of them. I just wanted to um, do a video, just kind of show you guys the type of books that I look at and the type of books that I pick up. So, um, yeah, some of these. Girl, your dress is inside out. What? You did a good job. Ow. <laughs> um. Some of these books are ones that I just picked up just because everybody was reading them and I don't know a whole lot about them and they were cheap and that's what I did. And then, like I said, the other of them were gifted during my um, book exchange that I do with Alora every month. So, um, I'm going to start here. This was, um, I'm, I'm pretty sure that these were the uh, books that I got from Alora at the beginning of October. Um, there may have been one more, but I can't remember. It may have just been, I think, mm, nope, I think it was just these. I don't know. It's fine. This is fine. Okay. So first of all, I actually have a new witchy book that I'm really excited about. This is called The Circle of Three, and it is kind of, um, as far as how many books are in it, it is very similar to the Sweep series by Kate Tiernan. So this is the circle of three books. This is the first one called So and Mode B by Isabel Bird. Um, and so this is just basically about three witches doing the thing. And I didn't look super far into the series other than to see that people seem to really like them. So that's my first one. My next two, I am a huge, huge, huge fan of Jennifer McMahon. So anything that comes out by her that I don't have, I immediately grab. And there is quite a few that I, I haven't immediately grabbed by her. So I had them on my wish list and Alora was awesome enough to pick them up for me. She is, has become one of my favorite authors. I've loved the books that I've read by her. So um, the first one that I got is called The Night Sister. Um, this one's a little bit more of a thriller. It seems like it's going to be a lot like The Winter People, which I read by her, which was a thriller, which was awesome. Um, sounds like there's a motel... Ooh, Amy Piper and Piper's kid sister, Margo. Piper's in it, come on now. Yeah, so there was a horrific crime. Uh, there was, sounds like there's like, you know, lies and deceit and hauntings and all kinds of goodness. So it's kind of par for the course for her types of books. And then the other one by her is The Invited. Um, and this is another chiller thriller um this one's borderlines horror this one's more along the lines of like a haunted house type book um this one's more of like a supernatural thriller so a chilling ghost story with a twist Ooh, in the woods of vermont tell the story of a husband and wife who don't simply move into a haunted house and they build one so that's kind of a different concept that i hadn't heard before and so i hadn't picked this up and this one i think is her newest novel that's out to date so i'm really excited about that one now i'll go to this stack this is a stack that i picked up at my local library they do a book sale year round all the time in the basement and so my mom and I and my daughter went there the other day and I happened to find some things that uh, appealed to me. The first one is The Absolutely True Diary of a Part-Time Indian by Sherman Alexi. Now I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, I don't know a whole lot about this book, I didn't look into it. It wasn't one that was on my radar, but I heard a ton of people that talked about it last year and that really, really enjoyed it and so I picked it up. Um, yeah, so. And there's a lot of people that seem to like it. Neil Gaiman and Amy Sedaris. And um, so it's about Junior, who's a budding cartoonist growing up in Spokane, on the Spokane Indian Reservation. He has a, a variety of medical problems. He's picked on by everyone but his best friend. Um, so he decides to leave the res to attend an all-white school in the neighboring farm town where the only other Indian there is the school mascot. 
despite being condemned as a traitor. Um, he attacks life with wit and humor and discovers a strength inside himself that he never knew existed. So, I'm kind of excited about this one. You know, we'll see when I get to around to reading it. But, it was, yeah, so that's kind of the reason that I picked up these other two. I'm not a huge John Green reader. It's not for not enjoying his books. I just, it's just not the type of genre that I read a ton of. Um, but my sister-in-law reads John Green like they're going out of style. And so I picked up Paper Towns and Looking for Alaska, both by John Green. Um, just because she told me that she loved John Green and they had books there and they were a dollar a piece. And so I picked them up. So if any of you guys have read these, then, you know, I know I have a fault in our stars downstairs. People have like died over that book. I haven't read that one yet either. So maybe someday I'll be turned into a John Green fan. We'll see. This one, um, I picked up partially because of the cover. I mean, look at this cover. This is called The Wicked Lovely by Melissa Marr. Um, so this one is about the Fae, and that was the other reason I picked it up. I'm just remembering. Um, so the inside cover has rule number one, rule number two, and rule number three. Don't stare at invisible fairies. Don't speak to invisible fairies. Don't ever attract their attention. Um, suddenly, none of the rules that have kept... Aislinn safe or working anymore and everything is on the line. Her freedom, her best friend, Seth, her life, everything. Fairy intrigue, mortal love, and the clash of ancient rules and modern expectations swirl together in Melissa Mars stunning 21st century fairy tale. I am a sucker when it comes to stories about the Fae. That's actually one of my favorite books by Jennifer McMahon. Um, I think it's called Don't Breathe a Word and that's about Fae. So I was really, really excited to find this one. I had never heard of it, but it was like $2. So... <laughs> onto the pile. This one's called The Roanoke Girls by Amy Engel. Um, I feel like I had, to, first of all, the cover itself intrigued me. The word Roanoke intrigued me because I just think the actual story behind Roanoke is super fascinating. Um, so I kind of picked it up partially for the cover. I do that a lot. Um, but it's a lot about a family who has a ton of tangled up secrets that live in Roanoke. Um, the Roanoke girls never last long around here. In the end, we either run or we die. And I was like, oh yes, I am I am going to read this. So, I don't know, I'm excited. That's what I got. You guys like my book hauls, don't you? I'm just like, I don't know, I picked this book up. I don't know what it's about, but I'm really excited about it. Okay, so then this last stack here, I promise this is it is um, my stack that I just recently finished getting the last few books from my uh, November book haul from, or book exchange from Alora. So this book, I actually just recently kind of looked into the series and I'm very interested. This is Ink and Bone uh, by Rachel Kane. And this is a book about, um, it's, a, it's a book about books. It is about, uh, oh my God. The, 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 hang on, hang on here. The, 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 the great, the great library, the, it's gone. It's gone. Hang on. Let me just, let me just look because I had it and there's a big sticker over top of the actual name of the library. It's like the library there, there it is the great library of Alexandria. Um, so it's basically talking about, because we all know that that was, that, that no longer stands. That was, you know, destroyed. But, so this book is basically taking place in the fact that the Great Library of Alexandria was never destroyed. And so it is lived on and, you know, it's, yeah, I, I, I don't know, it just sounded interesting, guys. I just looked at it and I was like, ooh, I want that. So I got it. It's about a library. Um, so the Great Library is now a presence in every major city, governing the flow of knowledge to the masses. Alchemy allows the library to deliver the content of the greatest works of history instantly, but the personal ownership of books is expressly forbidden. So we follow around Jess Brightwell, who believes in the values of the library, but the majority of his knowledge comes from illegal books obtained by his family. And so this big adventure that he goes on, and I'm really excited about it because it's just not about, it's like not anything I've read before. So I'm excited. This gem. So this is called The Eye in a Trial. Look at the fucking authors on this. Holly Black and Cassandra Clare. Shut your fucking mouth right now. So 
<laughs> the iron trial and I can't really tell you a whole lot of what it's about um I it seemed like it was very I don't know I've never read Percy Jackson but it seemed like it was going to be like very I don't know kind of like Percy Jackson Harry Potter like that like the group of friends that go through you know what, I, you know what I'm saying like it has that vibe um so Holly Black wrote um the Cruel Prince series, Cassandra Clare wrote the Shatterhunter series. I loved them both, and the fact that they have a book together is killing me. So I put it on my list, and lo and behold, I got that bitch, and I'm real excited. Uh, so most kids would do anything to pass the Iron Trial, not Callum Hunt. He wants to fail all of his life. Callum has been warned by his father to stay away from magic. If he succeeds at the Iron Trial and is admitted to the Magisterium, he is sure it can only mean bad things for him. So he tries his best to do his worst and, worst and fails at failing. Now the Magisterium awaits him. The Iron Trial is the beginning for the biggest test is still to come. So I'm really excited because I like both authors. And I feel like if they wrote something together, it can't be bad, right? And I want to say that this is a series, maybe. Yeah, it says book one. So this is a series. Um, it was out in 2014. I, I, bought, I got it for the author, so I'm excited about that. These bad boys. Um... So Sky in the Deep I've had on my list for a while now. Um, this is by Adrienne Young. And so this book, this book has gotten kind of like iffy reviews. People either absolutely adore it or they're pretty meh about it. Um, and so I, I'm, I'm very interested. I don't know. It, hmm. I don't know. I, I'm excited. I'm excited about it. I just hate when I read reviews ahead of time and then people are like, meh, because then it kind of like puts a little bit of a damper in my excitement. But Raised to be a Warrior, 17-year-old Elin fights alongside her Asuka clansmen in an ancient rivalry against the Riki clan. Her life is brutal but simple. Fight and survive until the day she sees the impossible on a battlefield. Her brother fighting with the enemy and the brother she watched die five years ago. Faced with her brother's betrayal, she must survive the winter in the mountains with the Riki in a village where every neighbor is an enemy, every battle scar possibly one she delivered. But when the Riki village is raided by a ruthless clan settling in the valley, Aelin is more is even more desperate to get back to her beloved family. And so she gets together with her brother's friend, Fisk, and they have to unite the clans, driven by a love for her clan and her growing love for Fisk. Yeah, super excited. So, um, yeah, I, this one, I I think Avalon just picked this up. I'm not sure if Alora did, too. Um, it looks like it's going to be, the, like, the writing style, and it looks like it's going to be beautiful. Um, you know, it has a very Viking-esque vibe to it, which is what drew, it to, drew me to it initially. Um, I just have to put aside some of the reviews that I've read on it and kind of go into it with a fresh mindset, which is really hard to do when you've already read reviews that people are like, yeah, mm, no. Um, so that one will probably be down the road because I want to like get the reviews out of my mind. Last but not least, as you can see, I'm already halfway through it. The Beautiful by Renee Adier. Now, this book is the book that we are currently reading on our, uh, on my Piper's Book Club. This book is due, like, December something. I think it's December 8th that we're going to review it. So, this is the book that we are reading right now. This is the book that I have been most excited for this year, minus Capturing the Devil. That is the one that I was most excited for. So, this was the second that I was most excited for. Um, and I had it on my Christmas list and lo and behold, Alora came through and got it for me instead. And it was funny because I actually gifted it to her and it, as she gifted it to me in the same gift exchange. So we kind of chuckled at that one a little bit. So I've already started it. I, I'm not, I'm not going to, I'm not going to give away any of my thoughts on it because we'll have a big discussion. But basically you are following a mortal girl named Celine who is harboring a dark secret um, and they don't, that they make sure to tell you that she's harboring a dark secret over and over again. But Selene is harboring a dark secret. Um, she and her friend Pippa have just come over from other places, Paris and, you know, elsewhere. They rode over on a ship to start a new life here and basically to run away from their dark secrets. Um, over here in New Orleans, and they uh, have joined a convent. 
and they kind of got mixed up with the underground world of New Orleans and come face to face with other immortal creatures. And so Celine has to kind of try to stay good for the convent, but she's also fighting this battle in her that wants to, that is 100% drawn to this other world. So, um, you know, going into it, let's pretend I haven't read it yet. Going into it, I'm really, really hoping that this book can fill, which sounds terrible, but I'm hoping that it can fill this twilight size hole, as somebody said in one of the last, uh, the last video that we did when I announced this was our book, the twilight size hole that's been in my heart for a really long time. Um, this is the first, I don't know if this is the first of two or if it's the first of a series, but I know for sure that the second book in this is coming out next year. Um, so yeah, uh, if you guys are interested in joining me, grab yourself a copy and we will be reviewing it on December 8th. So that is my one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 12 books that I have acquired um, in very little cost to me <laughs> in the books of October and November. So while my daughter is just kind of hanging out, did you get your dress turned around? She's absorbed in what she's doing. Um, while she's kind of hanging out and I have supper going, I might continue reading because let me tell you something right now. When I'm done with this, I'm reading Capturing the Devil. And then when I'm done with Capturing the Devil, I want to start the Percy Jackson series. So I got a lot of stuff to do before 2020 is over. Okay. Anyway, I love you guys very much. I'm sorry this video ended up being long. I knew it was going to, but it was going to be even longer if I did a live one. And I didn't want to do a live one, so... Okay, I hope you guys have an awesome day. I hope you can set aside some time to read or do something that you enjoy for yourself. And I will see you guys very, very soon. If you haven't seen on my Facebook and on my Instagram, on both of those, I have posted um, a question for you, which was basically that I wanted to do a bookish Q&A, like a super fun one. And so I wanted you guys to ask me any kind of book associated questions. So if you want to head over to my Facebook or my Instagram, you're more than welcome to do that and get a couple questions in before I pop that video out at some point. And then we're also going to do a, hey, let's chat while I sew one of these nights coming up. I'm not sure when, but it's just going to be a little fun. Let's just chit chat. So, okay. Once again, I love you guys. I'll see you later and have a good day.